am the business development specialist for the Workforce and Illinois Small Business Development Center at Southeastern Illinois College, which is a lot to say, sorry. But uh, we are a really great program that uh, offers small business advising um, at no cost. And so we offer advising um, in the areas of um, writing a business plan, uh, marketing planning, uh, financial planning and projections, um, just about any question that you can possibly imagine uh, having a, a small business owner or starting a small business. Um, and that has expanded quite a bit in the last year. So uh, we've answered lots of questions and if we can ever assist you, we are happy to do so. Just have to contact me and I will put my email in the chat. But right now, I'd like to share this over with Dara Perryman with the Small Business Administration. Dara, I'll have you kind of explain your role a little bit. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Carla, for inviting me to speak with everyone today. I am an outreach and marketing specialist here with the Small Business Administration. So today I'm going to be providing a, an update on the Paycheck Protection Program and other relief programs available at the SBA. Let me see if I can share my screen. Go. All right. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, we have a lot to cover. If you have questions throughout, please feel free to put them in the chat. I may pause periodically um, between programs. Um, just to check in with everyone and um, we'll go from there. So as I said, you know, here at the SBA, we have a few different relief programs going on right now. So I'll provide an update on those and then please feel free to ask any questions you might have about the programs and I'll be happy to address those, those questions. So where we are right now, Essentially, when Congress reconvened at the end of December, they passed the Economic Aid Act, and that allowed for funding for another round of the Paycheck Protection Program. So if you're not aware, the Paycheck Protection Program was passed back with the CARES Act in March of 2020. So it basically provides forgivable loans for small businesses to help cover their payroll costs. Now, in order to have that loan forgiven, you must use the loan proceeds at 60% on payroll costs and then 40% on eligible non-payroll costs. So like your mortgage, rent, utilities, et cetera. So um, another aspect of the PPP program is that you will go through a private sector lender. You're not actually applying through the SBA directly. You are going out to find a lender, but we have a full list on our website. We also have several different tools to, to help you find a lender. And so um, another update came. So the PPP round, you know, second wave started at the beginning of this year. And then on February 22nd, the Biden-Harris administration took several uh, different steps to ensure access to the program. So I'll actually go to that slide right now. So here are the top four changes that came at the end of February. So one of them was um, a new formula for calculating the maximum loan amount. This was for sole proprietors, independent contractors, and self-employed individuals. So originally, when you applied as among that group, you would use your Schedule C-1040, the line 31. So that's your net profit. Um, but now the new formula allows you, you to use line 7, which is your gross income. So for some people, that might result in a higher loan. Um, another big change was um, eliminating restrictions for ex-felons. Uh, originally, there was a restriction if you had had any felony within the last five years. There was that restriction of getting the loan. This has been lifted. Um, and another, another huge update was allowing those who are delinquent on their federal student loan to also be able to apply. And then finally, there was just some systematic changes to allow and ensure equitable access for immigrant-owned small businesses on our end. And, um, with the treasury to make that more accessible for that community. So lots of big changes to the program. Um, so we'll go ahead and just break it down. So when Congress reconvened to allocate more funding for this program, they did allow for first draw and second draw applications. So a first draw means that you did not receive a PPP loan before. 
So um, if you, you know, didn't receive a loan last year, maybe you heard about the program, you weren't sure if it was for you, whatever your situation might have been, now you are able to apply uh, for a first draw loan. So this application is open until March 31st, no matter if you're a first draw borrower or second time borrower, you wanna take note of that March 31st. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Hey, Dara, how you doing? Good. <laughs> My name is Jaleesa. Um, so if I never apply for the loan and um, I'm sole proprietorship, would I be eligible to, to try to apply? Last year, I did work as an um, independent contractor for Senior Life Insurance Company um, as well. I'm still contracted through them. Um, I didn't know if I would be eligible to apply or not. Yeah, sole proprietors, independent contractors, and self-employed, you are eligible to apply. So you'll want to find your uh, 1040 Schedule C. That's what you'll use to calculate your loan amount. Okay, this uh, I'm kind of new to everything. I, as I recently, I started the I did the I started the life insurance just last year, and then um, the website design business. I just started franchise owner in that uh, this January. So. I, I didn't know if I could. Um, okay, yeah. So when did you start last year? Last year, about, I would say August. Okay, so for the, the requirement for uh, both the first draw and second draw, the business date operation is February 15, 2020. So you must have been in operation as of that date to qualify for PPP. Yeah, I, I, okay, that's fine. I just wanted to ask. I figured that, I kind of figured that. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Please ask away if you guys have any questions. Thank you. Um, but we, we can get into other programs after this. Um, we do have other types of programs for businesses that are newer. Um, so we can segue into that in a few moments. Um, so that is a first draw. So that one's pretty straightforward. Again, if you did not receive a PPP loan last year or this year, you are first draw applicant. Uh, eligible entities. So as I said, your sole proprietors, independent contractors, self-employed, that group, you are eligible, businesses, nonprofits and veteran organizations, and also tribal businesses. The top group, they are newly eligible. So housing cooperatives, destination marketing firms, uh, chambers of commerce, are now eligible, and uh, news organizations. All right, so what's a second draw PPP loan? So this would be if you received a PPP loan last year, or even if you applied in early February. So in order to get a second draw PPP loan, you must also have been in operation as of February 15, 2020. But in addition, there's three big points you wanna meet in order to qualify for the second one. Number one, you must have already received a PPP loan last year or, or at any time. But a big note on that one, you must have used or will have used all of those loan proceeds before the disbursement of your second PPP loan. Now, a note about this first requirement, um, this is really important for forgiveness. You cannot have your covered periods overlap. So what that means and what a covered period is, it means the day that your loan funds are dispersed in your account, that's your first day of your covered period. Now, your covered period is at a minimum eight weeks and a maximum 24 weeks. So you, as a borrower, get to decide which cover period you would like. So basically, how long do you wanna to have to spend those funds? So at a minimum eight weeks, a maximum 24 weeks. Now we get this question a lot, you know, what if I use all of my funds in six weeks? Can I then go out and apply for a second PPP loan? So the answer is, um, again, no, because you cannot overlap your covered period. So um, the covered period is a minimum of eight weeks, no matter if you spend your funds at three weeks and four weeks, it's just barring you from getting a second loan until minimum of eight weeks time has passed. Another point, you must have 300 employees or less. And then the last point, suffered a 25% reduction in gross receipts. So there's a couple ways to do that. Usually you're gonna use your calendar year quarter um, and go down the line, you know, from 2019 quarter one to 20, 2020 quarter one, go down until you can find a 25% reduction. Now, if you weren't in business all of 2019, you could use your 2020 quarters to find this reduction. Um, and if you're a seasonal business, there is guidance on that, on how to go through that. All right, so the process in a nutshell, 
the first step is finding a lender. That's going to be the, the first thing you want to do. So we have a few different avenues to do that. You can go through Lender Match. Um, it's a, 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 a on our website. You basically just put in your contact information, what you're kind of looking for, and lenders will contact you directly. However, I would say if you're interested in this program, just because we're we're approaching that March 31st deadline, I would suggest you go through sba.gov forward slash paycheck protection slash find. The reason being is that lenders are very busy right now, as you can imagine, processing PPP applications. So in, in my opinion, you may want to just go ahead and use this lookup tool, and it'll basically bring you to a map of all lenders near you. And then you, as a potential borrower, could just call around a little bit more proactive rather than submitting a form and waiting for a lender to contact you. Maybe better to just go ahead and start calling lenders because again, that, that deadline is approaching. And the second step will be completing the application. So you're going to do that with your lender. They may have an online portal set up. Um, usually most banks are doing online. Um, you may work with them to make sure you've supplied everything for the application. And then finally, the lender will submit it to the SBA. We'll give you a loan number. After the lender has submitted it and everything is processed, it generally takes 10 or so business days for the funds to be dispersed into your account. Um, so if you applied with your lender and you haven't heard anything back, we get this question a lot too, you know, like what's the turnaround time really depends on the lender and their capacity. So I would just say check with them, stay in communication with them, but just make sure it's moving along because again, that deadline is approaching. So this is just information. Again, this is a forgivable loan, but in order to have it forgiven, you have to follow the program rules. And the biggest thing about this program is it could be used as 60% of the proceeds for payroll. So let's say for whatever reason, you're not able to meet that requirement, you use not quite 60% for payroll. What will then happen is this will turn into a loan. So it's gonna be a 1% interest rate. There's no prepayment penalty and no collateral will be required. Um, and it's going to be a five-year maturity date. If you applied last year before June, it's a two-year maturity date. However, you can ask your lender to extend it if you want, so you have that flexibility. And then, you know, how does forgiveness work? How do payments start? Those are great questions we get a lot. So your payment's deferred until um, 10 months after the last day of your covered period. Now, remember, you're electing your covered period. So you can have a covered period at eight weeks, 10 weeks. Just know it just has to be a minimum of eight and a maximum of 24. So whichever one you elect. So the last day of your cover period um, and then 10 months, add 10 months to that. Um, and then forgiveness, how that works. Again, you work with your lender. We have forgiveness applications. There's an expedited one coming. Um, so that's not out yet, but it will be soon. That's for loans under 150,000. It's just a little bit simpler, but right now we do have some forms already out. So you just complete your form. Submit it to your lender, your lender reviews it, submits it to SBA, and then um, we communicate if there's a portion that needs to be repaid or that is not going to be forgiven. So that's how that process works. I think we've covered most of these items. So we will skip ahead. All right, I just wanna pause and check in if there are any questions um, before we move on to other programs. It looks like you had one in the chat. Um, uh, right. Michelle asked, what if this is the first draw self-employed individual and has never shown a payroll to themselves? They only work out of the capital of funds that is left over in the business account, but do not necessarily show a paycheck to them personally for proof of payroll. Um. Yeah, so a couple of things. So when you, if you're talking about how do you prove that you paid yourself, you can write, um, you don't necessarily show a paycheck to them personally for proof of a payroll. Yeah, I'm gonna bring you, bring up a few resources that may help you. So the first place is sba.gov forward slash PPP. You go here under first draw, just let this, 
pull up. So the third document at the bottom, how to calculate your loan amount and what documentation to provide. So this will walk you through, depending on what type of business entity you are, um, how, how to go about that process. So um, the first scenario doesn't look like it's been updated yet, but um, remember if you're a sole proprietor, you can use line seven now instead of line 31. Um, so this, this will break down you know, how you actually calculate your loan amount. Um, and if you scroll down further, I think it's question five, six. Where did it go? Yeah, actually, I think it's just this top one I would refer you to. Um, yeah, so you, again, you're going to use your, your line um, 31 net profit amount, but again, you could use either um, line 31. Some people will choose to still use line 31, but you can also use line 7. Sometimes that would result in a higher loan amount. So that's how you're going to calculate your loan amount. Um, as far as what documentation you need to provide to prove that you paid yourself, work with your lender. I know some sole proprietors have been just showing um, you know, like a, a, a check that they paid themselves with. Um, other lenders aren't requiring that. So just work with your lender. Um, if you're unsure again of how to calculate your actual loan amount, again, you're gonna use your schedule C, either line 31 or line seven, and you'll divide that by 12, then multiply that by 2.5. So that's how you actually calculate your loan amount. And while we're here on the website, I will just navigate to a few other places to show you more about how to find some resources for PPP. <clears throat> so the other place, especially if you're early on in the process, sba.gov forward slash PPP. You scroll down to find a lender. So this is what I was referring to. So we have lender match. I'll just go ahead and show you. Blender Match may be good if you're looking for other SBA programs. So if you like, believe someone asked being a newer business or a startup. So SBA, we do have other programs out there for startups, specifically our 7A program may be of interest to you um, or whatnot. So anyways, how you get connected with lenders is through Lender Match. You fill in this, put in your email, your contact, and then again, lenders will contact you. That is one way you could get connected with a PVP lender. Another way, as I was saying, is just this lookup tool, search for lenders in your area. So it's gonna populate, bring you to a map, and you just put in your zip code, and it's gonna populate you know, lenders near you. You can go ahead and start giving them a call and start that process. Now, one note I wanna make about lenders. So, couple questions we get a lot. You know, let's say you're a second draw applicant. Can you switch lenders? Can you go to a new lender for the second loan? So yes, you can. My advice would be to try and identify your loan number from the first lender. That'll just make it easier for your new lender to process. But yes, you can. We understand, you know, sometimes you may not have had the best experience or you want to, you know, move to a different lender. That is okay. Another note, you want to make sure when you're finding a lender, you do your research um, and you have direct communication at a, some, in some way. That's really important. And another note, just being intentional about submitting your application. We do sometimes see, because I know a lot of these, you can just kind of go online, submit a PPP application. It's pretty quick and seamless. So you just want to be careful because you don't want to get into a situation where you've submitted multiple applications to different lenders. Because what will happen is, let's say you finally choose a lender you want to actually move forward with, they cannot process your PVP application until you withdraw from every other lender. So just be careful. We have been seeing that. Some folks apply to a bunch, and then they can't remember where all they, and so it'll just delay the process. My advice, do as much research as you can. Even better, if you can have direct communication with somebody at that, that lending institution, um, and then make your decision. And you still have plenty of time. You have about two weeks, a little less than two weeks, March 31st. So this is where you'll go to find your lender. The, and, and there's other ways too. You can ask around, you can ask in your community, you can ask your lending institution. Even if they're not an S SBA lender, they may, they may know someone or 
recommend someone. Um, just check the chat real quick. Um, don't see any other ones. Okay, another place. I think that covers it. I think I'll take you to one more really helpful link. So again, it's just sba.gov forward slash PPP. So you're a first draw borrower, you can go to this tab. If you're a second draw, you can go here. So let's go to our second draw tab. So if you scroll down here, again, it'll give you a breakdown of pretty much most of the things we've talked about. Um, and uh, it'll talk about you know who qualifies. Remember three big points for second draw loan. Um, and I want to make this distinction because sometimes we we hear that folks are a bit confused between the two. So for a first draw loan, you do not have to show that you have suffered any reduction in gross receipts. This is only for a second PPP loan. So we get this question a lot too. You know, if I if I um you know lost revenue, let's say um, from in 2020, am I still eligible? So yes, if you meet all the other program criteria points, you do not need to show that you have suffered um, a certain amount in, in gross receipts um, or anything like that for first PPP loan. It's only for the second one. So just want to clarify that a little bit. Um, so yeah, if you scroll down, um, this is under the second draw tab. This one is really helpful. It's the third bullet point. So it's how to calculate that revenue reduction and maximum loan amount. So We'll go ahead to this tab. So if you scroll down, it gives right off the bat, you know, what is defined as gross receipts. It gives you a full definition. If you scroll down to question three, what reference periods can be used to determine whether the applicant can demonstrate at least a 25% reduction in gross receipts? So um, there's four, four different scenarios. So this is going to be, if you are open all of 2019 and all of 2020, that's a straightforward one. You use the calendar year quarters down the line, try to find comparable quarters at that 25% reduction. Now, let's say you weren't in business during the first and second quarters of 2019, but you were for the last, then what you'll do then is you're going to look at any quarter of 2020 and compare it to either the third or fourth quarter of 2019. And then the other example is, let's say um, you weren't in operation in 2019, because let's for this program, remember, you just had to been operating as of February 15, 2020. In that case, you'll just look at your 2020 quarters, compare quarter one to either quarter two, three, or four from 2020. So this is helpful, especially if you are trying to qualify for that second PPP loan. Um, you do have to meet that 25% reduction. Um, I do see one question here. Does it look like the second draw deadline will be extended? So right now, the, the application deadline is still um, going to be March 31st. If that does change, though, we will be sure to update uh, everyone. I will show you. I'm not sure if you all are subscribed to our emails, but it's a great way to just stay up to date with program updates. So sba.gov forward slash IL. So you go here, this is just to get connected with our um, Illinois district office. So we have our direct line, we have a Springfield office. So we have the, the line here as well. You scroll down just to email updates and you just hit get email updates. I would really recommend this because if there's ever any changes, if um, you know, particularly for the other programs I'm getting ready to talk about that are not open yet, you want to make sure you're you're connected with us because we will for sure the moment anything changes we'll send something out all right all right there's anything else on here all right i think that's the gist of the paycheck protection program trying to think if there are any other kind of frequently asked questions we get but i Think that's the bulk of it. So let's go back here. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free. We have plenty of time. But um, in the meantime, I will move on to another program. So you may have heard of the Economic Injury <clears throat> Disaster Loan. It's also known as IDLE. It is. So this one we have to kind of shift gears a little bit. This is a direct loan 
from the SBA. So unlike the Paycheck Protection Program, you have to kind of go out on your own, find a lender. This one, you go directly through SBA's website. Online, you apply. Um, and this one is a loan. This is not forgivable. There's no way to have this loan forgiven. It is a loan from the federal government. You must pay this back. So the terms are 3.75% for our businesses and 2.75% for nonprofits. Eligibility, generally the same as, as for PPP. So, you know, independent contractors, sole proprietors, self-employed individuals, they can apply. Small businesses can apply. Most private nonprofits are eligible um, and, and so on. So similarly, as far as eligibility is concerned, this one, as far as the use of proceeds, it's strictly to be used for working capital. So take note of that. Um, and a question we do get a lot, you know, can I have a PPP and can I have an idle? And the answer is yes, you can have both. You just cannot use them for the same purposes at the same time. So you can't, you know, double dip in that sense, but you can apply for both and have both. Um, the deadline for this, you have several, you have a while, it's December 31st, 2021. So if you're thinking about it, it's not that you need to rush or anything, you can take your time because there's plenty of time to still apply. Um, there is a cap right now at about 150,000 per loan. Um, if that changes though, again, we will definitely be updating everyone. So try and stay connected with us, but that is just good to know. Um, another requirement must have been in business as of January 31st, 2020. So similarly to PPP, you had to have start, started right around um, before the pandemic really picked up. Um, oh, my chat disappeared. Just making sure there's no questions. All right, so the next program is our targeted idle advance. So targeted idle advance is a new program. It was in the Economic Aid Act. What it is is a direct payment to individuals who applied for an idle advance grant last year. And the, to back up a little bit, the idle advance, this was with the CARES Act. And essentially it was a one-time emergency grant given to individuals right around when the CARES Act came out. It was in the CARES Act. So it was up to $10,000. Um, this was uh, a part of the idle loan application. So in addition to getting a loan, you could have also gotten an emergency grant. So, some, so a couple things happened here. Some people applied for the grant were approved for it, but then the funding ran out. Funding ran out in about July. So that group did not get the, the grant. And then there was another group that did receive the grant, but not the full amount, not the full 10,000. So now what the SBA is doing, they're reaching out only to those groups. And additionally, you also must have suffered um, a 30% economic loss, 300 or less employees, and you must be in a low income community. So there's some expanded eligibility and criteria here. So the SBA is reaching out to those individuals who qualify and allowing them to move through this application process. They have already begun contacting individuals. So this is not a new application. You don't need to go online to apply. The SBA is reaching out to them directly. And I believe the next slide here touches on what will be required of you if you are among that group. Again, if you are, really take your time through this. As I'm aware, there's no reconsideration. Um, if you miss something or don't fill something out completely, there's not an opportunity to really redo this. So really be intentional about this step. Um, if you have questions, so this is the, the email, targetedadvance at sba.gov. So if you have questions about this program um, or, or just want to know more, or some, if you are among the group maybe that qualified um, and you missed something, you need to get in touch with someone, please take note of this email address. And also if you are approved, you are gonna be receiving an email from SBA. I have heard that some people have been missing the emails. So just try to, if you think you are among the group that is qualified for this program, check your junk and spam inbox. If you missed it again, take note of this email. All right. So the final program that we have, this one is not yet available yet, but it is coming. 
is our shuttered venue operators grant. So this is going to be $15 billion total. That's how much was allocated in the Economic Aid Act. So it's going to be maximum grant per entity is 10 million, but it is only for shuttered venues. So like a live venue operator, theater producer, um, a talent representative, um, museums, zoos. What other examples do we have? I think that, you know, mostly the arts is what we're looking at. And um, this, this is a new program, completely new. So the SBA is pretty much building this from the ground up. So the application is not yet open. There's some steps you can take now though, if you are interested in this program, um, I'll actually go ahead and navigate to that website so you can see more about it. Cause I know there's a lot of interest for this program. So if you just go to sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief, it actually gives you a full breakdown of all of our programs. You just scroll down and it has everything. So we're gonna go to the SVOG grant. So it goes over the program details. Um, basically to qualify, the grant is gonna equal 45% of your gross earned revenue. Again, the maximum loan amount per entity is 10 million. And there's a slide here to sign up for email alerts. So I would also say if you're interested, please do that. Um, there's a frequently asked questions document, eligibility, who can apply, your grant amount, and then how to apply. And there's one other thing. Yes, this is a link. So in order to get to even apply for this grant, you have to register in the system for award management, also known as SCAM. So a lot of people have been starting that process now because, again, that is something you need to do to apply. So there's a video tutorial on how to do that. So it's just linked there. I would recommend if you're interested in this program to go ahead and do that. If you do have questions about the SAM, we can help as well. Um, we do help quite a bit. We have had a lot of questions about this program recently too. What kind of questions have you been getting? We're getting a lot of questions about who is technically eligible. Um, so we have a lot of um, food trucks, um, vendors who operate at shuttered venues, um, and they've had questions about whether or not they can apply. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we have, we've been getting tons of questions too about this. Um, and yeah, my advice is to look through the, uh, this is a new document. I think we just updated this about a week ago. So this is the eligibility requirements. So there's a lot of nuance. Um, I would, yeah, the best advice we can give is to really read through those documents. And another note, because this is a competitive process, the SBA, we can't necessarily assist folks one-on-one -on -one because this is a competitive process. Um, so, you know, someone like Arla would be a wonderful resource to go to if you do have questions or, you know, need, need assistance, you know, putting, getting together and getting prepared. But there's still so much on our website that you can find a lot of information about, like this frequently asked question document. We actually update it weekly because we have been getting wonderful questions. So I would say if you do have questions, there's also, I believe the emails at the end of this document. Uh, we, we ask folks to send in their emails, um, let me find it, or their questions to, I believe it's the sbog at sba.gov. I'll find it in one moment. Um, so yeah, if you do have a question that's not included in this frequently asked question document, please send it in because that helps us to, you know, make sure we are um, covering everything related. Where did it go? Oops. All right, here we go. All right, so yeah, the frequently asked questions document is a wonderful place to start. And it goes over eligible entities right here as a high level definition. And then um, it goes through different scenarios as well. Um, a big note or update um, to share. Originally, you could not have the PPP loan after December 27th and also have an SVOG. So that has actually been updated as well. So you can actually have a PPP um, loan after December 27th, 
but if you apply for the SVOG, that PPP loan amount would be deducted from your award amount. So that's just a new update that's just been come out uh, before you were barred from getting the SVOG at all. So now they have opened that up. Um, if you do get the SVOG and then you decide like later that you wanted PPP or something, then that would be a no. So the time, the, the, the order of which you receive these programs, they do matter. Uh, so just be aware of that. Okay. Oops. All right. Okay, I think that's the bulk of what I wanted to discuss. This is a notice on our SBA back debt relief. So if you do have an existing loan through the SBA, like a 7A loan or 504 or micro loan, the CARES Act did allow for the SBA to make payments on the principal and interest. Um, this has been extended. It depends on when the loan was signed as far as how many extra months you'll get. Your lender should have already sent you a notice informing you if you um, do qualify for more payments covered by the SBA. So, and I'll just talk, because I know someone had a question about maybe being a newer business and what is available for um, new businesses, as we have a few moments. Yeah. Oh. All right, I can put this in the chat as well. Overview. See loans. Okay. So this is a great place to start. Um, so basically how it works, it's similar to um, PPP. So all of the loans through SBA, they're not really applying to the SBA. The only difference is that IDO loan, that COVID-19 disaster loan, that one is through SBA. The rest of them are going to be backed by the SBA and it's going to have that SBA guarantee. So it's the same thing. You're going to go to a private sector lender for most of them. Um, the 504 one, you will go to a CDC or Community uh, Development Corporation, um, but the rest of them you will go through private sector lenders. So startup 7A is pretty popular for startups because 7A can be used for such a variety of things. Um, so again, you want to, the first step is maybe to meet with a resource partner, just to make sure you're prepared before you go and actually speak to a lender. But um, it's great to just kind of look through the program and see, you know, what may be required of you. So the maximum for this loan, I believe is 5 million. Yeah, 5 million. And generally it's, 10% down um, if you're a newer business. But um, again, work with your lender and maybe start doing research on lenders to have that conversation. But as far as what it can be used for, just about anything, um, you really can work with a lender to kind of tailor it to your own needs. That's why it's so popular among startups. Um, so this may be a great option. Um, I know a lot of folks ask for grants. Fortunately, we, we don't have too many grants for startups, but um, if you're looking for a loan or extra capital, 7A may be a good option to look through. And it goes through this, this website goes through that. Another one for startups would be our microloans. Right. So a microloan is great because it provides up to 50,000 for small businesses to start up and expand. So this one, you will go to a micro lending institution. Um, Again, you can find that all on our website as far as where do I find one, find one through Lender Match as well. So this is a good option as well if you are a startup looking for additional um, funds to help you. This is another really popular one. And then we have our 504. So these loan programs are kind of always around. There are staple SBA loan programs, but we have PPP and IDLE right now due to the pandemic. But these ones are available year round. So the 504 um, is another option. This is great if you're looking to fund a big project or a big expansion, um, something of that nature just because of how it's set up. This one is a good program. So basically what you'll do, you'll go through Lender Match or um, find an SBA lender, talk with them about which program you're interested in, 
and then you'll you'll kind of go from there. But that's the gist of them. And the lenders that you speak with could also give you great advice and insight on which one may be best for you based on your needs. All right, well, that's all I have. So if there are any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. If not, I have just our contact information up, um, our, our social media and um, other, the direct line to us and also our district office email address. So other ways to get in touch with us. Does anybody have any other questions that weren't already answered? <laughs> Can you tell me again where to get onto your email um, list for future? Yeah. yeah, I'll actually just put it in the chat. Awesome. It's easier. Thank you. Yeah. I went ahead and put my email address in as well on the chat. If you um, have any questions um, that we can assist you with, uh, business plans for those 7A loans, uh, financial projections, marketing plans, and any sort of uh, emergency lending, we can also help and, and get you set up and sent to the right places. Thanks, Arla. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. And if you guys do have any questions, follow-up questions, here is um, our contact information again. And I think the best way to stay updated is to get connected with us through our email. So I put that in the chat. Thank you so much for giving us this presentation today. It, it's very helpful. Thank you for having me and thank you everyone for joining and learning a little bit. Hope you learned something new today and at least know where to go to find some resources. Thanks so much. If anybody has any other questions, make sure to email us. Have a thank great you. day. Thank you. Thank you.